And unity to the community. YM3 having a party is another episode, so here we go. I could have sworn I left it right here. Um, Kendra, what are you doing on the floor? Hey, 
<laughs> Why are you sitting in the dark? I came in, but it was dark and I tried to find a light switch when I fell. Well, the light switch is over there. Where yeah, it's the always, light switch. always. Hey, my iPod is missing. Has anybody seen it? Well, it has to be around here somewhere. Come on, keep looking. Well, I'm off to the playground. See you later. Daily, what do you think? About what? Are you thinking what I'm thinking? Keandra took it. It is so strange how Keandra was sitting here in the dark, and then when we came in and turned on lights, she looked all startled. Yeah, and start leaving and stuff. No, what? No. Keandra would never steal from us. Well, it did look a little suspicious. Suspicious? What's that? Suspicious means something believed to be wrong. Or questionable. Well, in this case, it is kind of suspicious. Well, Keandra did leave early, but we can't just blame her like that. Yeah, we all pass too much judgment. The scripture says in John 7, 24, stop judging by what you see, judge correctly. Yeah, we shouldn't judge others. We should. Whatever, if you want your iPod back, you better go and get it. But I'm not even sure if Keandra took it. The man in the Bible who was wrongfully judged, I believe it's in the story of Job. Job was a godly man that lived in the land of Uz. He had ten children and much livestock, and men to help him work. Job loved God very much and worshipped him every day. One day, the devil came to God and said to him, You have blessed Job and given him everything. This is the only reason he worships you. If you take away your blessings, Job will no longer praise you. God had faith in Job and replied, Do what you want to all Job has, but do not harm him. Suddenly a messenger came to Job saying, All of your oxen are gone, and all the men that you help you are gone too. While he was speaking, another messenger came and said, a huge fire has killed all the sheep. And a third messenger arrived saying, Some thieves came and stole all your camels. And a fourth messenger came and said, All of your sons and daughters were eating together when suddenly a huge wind came through and destroyed the house and killed them all. Job was so sad. In a single day he lost everything. He fell to his knees and began worshiping God, saying, the Lord gave, and the Lord has taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. After all those bad things that happened to Job, he still praised God. The devil was upset because Job still was praising God. So he went to God and said, If Job were hurting in his body, he wouldn't praise you. God answered the devil, saying, Do what you want, but do not kill him. So the devil gave Job very painful sores all over his body. Job had nothing. Job's wife said to him, Let it go. Curse God and die. Job thought that was foolish. Do we only take the good and not the bad? Still he praised God. Job's friends heard about what happened to him, so they came to visit. His friends told Job that he had sinned, and that was why all these horrible things had happened. Job insisted that was not the case, but they would not believe him. Job still insisted he had not sinned against God. Finally, God spoke and said, Who is it that gives advice without knowledge? Where were you when I laid the foundation of the earth? Answer if you have any understanding. God said to Job's friends, you have not spoken the truth of me as Job has. Take seven bulls and seven rams and go to Job and offer them up for yourselves. Job will pray for you and I will accept this prayer for you. Fearing the wrath of God, the man did as God had told them. 
As Job prayed for his close friends, God returned his fortune and everything that had been taken away by the devil. God gave Job twice as much as in the beginning. After all this, Job lived 140 years, and he loved God and praised him every day. He was judged, and he was wrongfully accused, even though he didn't even do anything. We shouldn't judge every time. Huh? It's not really right. It's not right at all. I don't. Well, you know, what Job's friends did to him is exactly what we're doing to Keandre. We shouldn't pass judgment on her so quickly. We know Keandre's character. We know she won't steal from us. Hey, y'all. Uh, I forgot my mom. We're, we're sorry. sorry. We're, so, we're so, sorry. so sorry. I don't even Keandre. know why I went there. I'm sorry. For what? We thought that you stole Daisy's iPod. What? You guys thought I stole her iPod? Wait, wait, wait. We saw the error in our ways. Just as Radon said, in John 7, 24, it says, Stop judging by only what you see. Judge directly. We realize your character, and, and now we know that we were wrong. But there's still the mystery of the iPod. Daisy, let's retrace your steps. Yeah. Let's see. Well, my iPod was plugged up over here. Then I heard the ice cream truck, and I really wanted some chocolate ice cream. And so I checked my pockets to see if I had money, and... Oops. <laughs> I guess I put it in my pocket when I was checking for money. My fault. Sorry. Obviously, we were wrong. And it was wrong of us to, to falsely judge her all because of what we saw her to do. And we apologize. I'm sorry. We sorry. So sorry. Well, our time is up. And remember, Jesus is our BFF. If we ever have any trouble, go pray to him. So, we'll see you later. Bye! Wow. I was so wrong to judge my friend Banana. I didn't get all the evidence to know that she actually tripped me. And to be honest, I really wasn't paying attention and it was my clumsiness that made me fall. It is so important that you don't judge your friends even when you think the evidence stacks against them. Always get their side of the story and never ever jump to conclusions. Well, I'm going back now and apologize to my friend Banana. I feel so bad. Remember our scripture? See you later. Banana!